Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Bible study and episode review in Shady Oak Ministries. I'm, of course, Shady Oak, and today we'll be going over episode 10 of season 2 of the TV show My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, the episode Secret of My Excess. Definitely a more direct and well-referenced Spike episode as compared to Equestria Games or All's Well That Ends Well. We get to see Spike as if he was growing up, whether or not why he didn't get wings. I'll never know, but... I think he looks cool in any way regardless, but on to a more important topic than aesthetics. I'd like you guys to turn with me in your Bibles. If you have a physical copy, great. If you have a digital copy, even better. Just type or turn to the book of Acts, chapter 20, and verse 35. And in this, I want to specifically be going over a quote by Jesus that we actually never are told in any of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. In those four books of the Bible, and starting out the New Testament, we get illustrations of the life of Jesus meant to emphasize a certain point about him. Note, the whole story was never told. In fact, at the last gospel, the gospel of John, John makes a note to the point in saying, if we wrote down everything that should have been written about this guy, there, there's not enough tree pulp and paper and animal skins and just rocks to carve into in all the world to put it all into all the libraries, to hold all of the books that should have been written about Jesus. So there are things that happen in the life of Christ that we aren't told in the Gospels, but more specifically to the point, the things that we were told were meant to tell us that he was not only the fulfillment of all of the Jewish prophecies in the book of Matthew, how he was a servant and is relatable to us as a human being in Luke, and how Well, in the way that he served us, he never faltered even one place. He was the perfect servant, the perfect servant king in Mark. And most of all, that he was the son of God and his divinity as being God himself in John. But in Acts 20.35, Paul the Apostle quotes from Jesus an unfamiliar statement and saying, It is more blessed to give than receive. Quoted directly from Jesus himself. And in Spike's letter at the end of the episode. He actually says something similar to the point. It's much better to give than to get. And that's always been the golden rule. You want to do something better to others than you would have to yourself. You'd want to do, uh, treat others the way that you'd want to be treated. And an expression of generosity, especially during this Christmas season, we want to make those gestures more outward and then know that it's naturally going to come inward as well. But noting all of this as being a central theme as far as a hard lesson that Spike would have to learn as not only important for his growth and character as being acceptable socially among moral human beings or ponies in this case, but something that's reflective of us in that we are both inerrantly fallen by nature. And Spike's literally biological growth pattern was centered around sin. It was centered around greed. And when he was given something good, like a birthday party, he was, his life was being celebrated. Hey, you're still here. And granted, there's some flawed logic to be had in that. Brad Stein made the good point in saying, well, yeah, life's here. Boom. Good. Give him a cake. This is a good thing. Life's here. Now get out of the way. More people are coming behind you. But then another year passes and we didn't do anything. We're just still here. And they give us more stuff. And cultural means have been taken to try and make this a more difficult process. Like, put so many candles on the cake, and if there's too many that they can't blow them out, it's time to go. Maybe, like for the kids, maybe make them wear pointy hats, make them look like idiots. The boys don't care, they make beaks out of them. Well, go to Mexico. Why not just take the child's favorite animal, fill it with candy, and have it beat the crud out of them? They'll be traumatized. Blindfold them. All of those amusing points. But Spike was given something good. And it's not to say that birthdays are a good thing or a bad thing. It's definitely a good thing. It's a celebration of life. And just like in the celebration of communion and remembering what these things represent to us and the wine and the bread, the wafer Jewish uh, mikvah cracker and Welch's grape juice, in saying, regardless of what I'm taking into my body, these remind me of the blood and body that was given for me. 
and it's not to say we're being cannibalistic, but we're recalling these things exactly like a birthday in that we are given sweets, we're given cake, ice cream, presents, because these naturally instill good feelings. Sugar has those properties, and we want to get that impression of saying, your life is a good thing, and we want to celebrate it and you to feel good on that day. That's why we give each other all of these things. And when Spike was given a birthday, it was a good thing. He was honestly shocked because any other impression he'd had from Twilight would kind of just be self-fulfilling prophecy of saying, well, we needed a new book anyway. Why not one Spike would like? But when its purpose became twisted, that's when it became a bad thing. It's not necessarily any good thing is inherently corrupt. It's just that we are corrupt, and when, uh, well... Modestly speaking, I could confirm this at least for myself, when someone and a pig's been rolling in the mud, you don't hand it something that you don't plan to get dirty because the dirt's inherently on it. And when it comes to me and my fallen nature, I constantly have to watch and remind myself of saying, what are the things that I'm doing and why am I doing them? Because even the good things that I can do can have the wrong heart and end up becoming wrong things. And Spike, he was getting gifts. I mean, who doesn't love getting presents, right? But the chain started, and he started tumbling downhill after that point when it became all about the presents. Cheerily, are you going to give me something? Hey, I could use that ball. What about those flowers? I don't think Spike ever needed flowers. Why would he want flowers? He's a dude. A voice by a girl actress, but you get the idea. He... <laughs> He twisted the purpose of receiving presents as a celebration of his life. Instead, he was saying, it's all about the take relationship now. Is this the policy? I want to take, it much as, I want to take advantage of this as much as I possibly can. And that is where it started to become corrupted. And it's the same thing that's true for anything that we do good in our lives. It, it's used with the wrong heart. That's why Jesus said, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And if your treasure is in the temporary things of this world, then you're only going to be going from one high to the next. If you set your mind on something that's worth, well, forever, like me, it's going to direct you into better directions because no one wants to receive favors from someone who's all about that take mentality. We talked about this in the previous study. And knowing that when it comes to our circumstances and relationships with each other, it shouldn't be based on what can I get from others. It should be, how can I bless someone else in the way that they've blessed me? The golden rule, treat others as you would be treated. And Spike started thankful. But as time grew on, it started to get twisted. And it's not saying the rod was originally straight. It's just that when we get our hands on something clean, it becomes dirty unless we wash ourselves before going in. And that's definitely a takeaway truth to consider before this. Before we do anything, we want to recognize God, I am fallen, but I want the right heart to do this. And it's something to be considered because we saw how quickly that Spike kind of fell down this trap of being greedy. The sapphire cupcake, good thing. Uh, weights from Rainbow Dash and this awesome blanket. You've been thanking me so much. I'm starting to get embarrassed. He was thankful. That's a good thing. But then when he started getting grabby, it, it wasn't that he wasn't doing something good or bad by enjoying the gifts that he was being given, but too much of a good thing, <laughs> well, it's like Solomon said, don't eat too, if you find honey, eat it, enjoy it, but if you eat too much, you're going to throw up. You know, you find something sweet, good, enjoy it, but in moderation, because, well, I don't have to tell you, if you eat too much candy on Halloween night, you'll see it again in, com in combined colors and not want to touch candy until next Halloween, but if that's just me, I'm sorry, but that's just my experience. When we enjoy these things too much, I think the best way to, ter to phrase it is if you focus too much on the blessings, you get your eyes off the blesser. And that's not what God or anyone else who wants to bless you would want, especially since God's literally doing everything good in your life through other people. And I think in taking this whole episode in a nutshell— I just want to read through with you guys James chapter 1 and verses 13 through 17. James, of course, being a very well-visited book of the Bible in these studies in practical Christian living, 
he just summarizes basically the plot point and likely what I believe was what inspired the authors to do this thing in the first place. He said this, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James basically lays it all out in the point. When Spike began to grow with his greed, the end result was only destruction. And you could tell his character and what made Spike adorable and relatable and sociable with the other ponies in the show, and why he could be considered a part of the main six as sort of just moral encouragement. It was a welcome and well-appreciated member of the show. That started to fade away as he grew because the one thing that was growing in his heart was his greed, his desires. It drew him away from what originally made him right and had made him inherently wrong. And that's not to say that all of these things are evil, but leaving the good path and going to something else is not good because you're not on the good path. And Jesus made this point clear in saying, narrow is the way and difficult is the road that leads to life. And there are few who go in by it because there's only one way. And it's at losing all that we are to ourselves and recognizing, I don't have anything to offer God eternally. I don't have anything good in me. And that takes a step of humility, something that is not in any of us, in our hearts. It's sacrifice, and that's inspired through the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus was saying, no one comes to the Father except those whom he calls. But even those whom he calls, they have a choice. And it goes into this Calvinistic and Armenian debate of saying, does God choose everyone? Are we just literally following his will to a T, or do we actually have free will? And I honestly would just take the stance of Forrest Gump's impression and saying, are we just floating accidentally like a feather on a breeze, or do we all have a destiny, like Lieutenant Diane said? I think it's both happening at the same time. God's big enough for that. But taking this on to the point of Spike being a dragon, being a creature that's biologically inclined to grow through greed, to be matured through his sin, he, well, like us all, we by nature are inclined to be drawn away. We, at default, unless those system settings are changed with the proper code and password that we have to provide ourselves at the loss of ourselves, as we are changing day by day, it's called growing up and not focusing on all of our needs like a baby who's just saying hungry, so we cry. And, you know, I made a mess, so I need changing. And depending on other people, but only thinking of my needs, the role of maturity is basically being someone who could be depended on more than you need dependence on other people. And it's really sad when someone is just basically, you know, 50 years old, still living with their parents. It's not an image that's really accepted in our culture, and there is merit to it. It differs from where you are in the world, but it begs the question of saying, is it a mark of maturity that you can not only support yourself, but then have enough to support those around you? And with this in mind as well, when sin was fully grown, no, it was a process. Spike didn't become 50-foot-tall, terrorizing Wonderbolts, gathering, uh, stealing Applejack's apples all the way down to Fluttershy's cottage and taking the cake <laughs> all the way up to being a ravenous monster and not even recognizing Rarity when she saw him or when he saw her even. You would notice that it was that one act of generosity that just like lighting a small light in a dark room immediately expunged all of that darkness. And turning down one light in a room, it makes some prominent effect. And you could tell that the change was equally as dramatic when Spike, going from 50 (laughs) or so feet tall and going into many meters or beyond these points, if you want to go metric, but just an enormous fire-breathing, ferocious dragon destroying everyone 
that he could get his eyes on all for the sake of his own greed and selfishly, like we've talked about when, with pride, if it's not internalized, it becomes weaponized and tears those around you, destroys our relationships and our hearts and character as well. We, we aren't even the same person. But one light was enough to shrink him all the way back to where he started again. Note, he hadn't gained progress in anywhere, and he, in fact, would have a lot to regret later. But at least he wasn't destroying anyone anymore. In fact, even in those opportunities of recovery, it gave him the courage to be able to say something to Rarity he would never have the opportunity before. And you need to recognize this. It was that one act of generosity that left a light in that room that had become so dark. And note, that darkness was great. There had been definitely some deep roots being put in there. And there is no question that there are consequences of the ways that we've lived our lives in the past and how they affect our futures. If we have addictions, we have to recognize we may have to make sacrifices to avoid feeding those things of the flesh because they're permanently a part of our bodies. And there is that physical need that's going to constantly drive us away, and we need to make preparations for that. But recognize as well that the freedom is just as dominant that the light is stronger than the darkness, but only when it's turned on. If you come to Jesus and recognize, yes, I am inherently wrong, but I'd rather stay the baby dragon and grow in, on the inside than have everything going for me on the outside, but no longer be considered the person that I once was. Would I sacrifice character for cash? Would I sacrifice my marriage for one moment of happiness that I feel, note, I feel, is it coming at the moment that I feel it should be? We need to recognize these things as uh, applicable in our lives in more than one way because, I mean, if a show like My Little Pony is going to teach us this. You can only imagine that the undiluted Word of God is going to teach us a lot more if it's been able to brew this much source in such entertaining ways. And that's the purpose of why I'm sharing you these things. Recognize it goes a lot deeper than the things we enjoy. That the stuff that we let into our minds, it's going to affect us. But the one thing that's been put into our minds makes all the difference in the end. Whether or not Spike had given that ruby to rarity or not, he would have remained as he was. But God has done things in your life, whether you've received him or not, to make those moments count that could end up not only saving your life but someone else's as well and recognize he is the source of life he knows how to take care of you but he's not going to force you like we've talked about many times before love doesn't force a relationship and god finds it a lot more fun to give you those opportunities rather than force you into submission he, he doesn't make people go to heaven I mean, granted, it's naturally assumed we'd all be happier there. But are we going to actually be in the presence of God forever? Yeah, that's what makes heaven paradise. Otherwise, it's just like someone who's been taken out of Africa, starving and, you know, disease-ridden for their, their entire existence, and given all-expense lifetime pass to Disneyland in front of every line and all the food they can eat. I guarantee you they'd get bored after two weeks. Because the same thing is true here. We can't meet our needs physically. The important thing is to grow spiritually. And that is where the real character counts. It's more blessed to give than receive. Oh, how happy are those who give than those who get. Because even especially for parents or people who have been older and had gotten the opportunity to give other people presents, you would find that even though there is no real monetary gain, if anything, you're losing by investing in someone, the opportunity to give someone else joy, even at the expense of yourself, would mean nothing if it wouldn't be for the first example of this kind of love that we had in Jesus Christ. And with Christmas, having uploaded this study, Christmas has actually been a few weeks past, and for anyone listening to this in the future, it could be anywhere on the calendar. Well, I want you to recognize that the message of Christmas, in recording this on Christmas Eve, regardless of the holiday's origins, the message remains the same. Jesus was a gift that showed us 
that God was willing to first give all that he had before he expected one thing from any of you. And that's what that real element of generosity is all about. It's about sacrifice. It's about compassion to the point of loss, even to yourself, and not caring about anything more than the gain of someone else. And God did that for you because he loves you. And it matters a lot more than the relationship that Spike has with Rarity or you would even have with your spouse and partner one day, with your children. No matter, name the person that you love most in this world. I guarantee you, God loves you more than anyone ever could because he's the one who knew you since before time began. And even at that point, at seeing all the horrible stuff that we would make of our lives, that's when he decided to come down and show us it was when you were dead in your trespasses that I came to give you life, that Christ died for the ungodly when we were at our worst. He died for us. And recognize that love. It was when Spike was at his worst that that fire ruby meant more to him than it ever could because it would be the one thing that defined who, who he would be in the future as far as a villain or a hero or even a character at all in the TV series to come. Recognize these points as applicable to your lives in more ways than one. And know as well that these are true. It's not just a fi <laughs> dragons. Whether or not they were a real creature or they were just extinct because of overuse in the Roman Empire's Colosseums or just died out in the Ice Age. Recognize this isn't a mythological concept. It's not a feel-good sermon. It is true. It is history. It's just illustrated through more fun means. And while I enjoy doing these studies, recognize there's nothing more important than who you are at your heart because it's not this body, it's not this life or the testimony of others that is going to stand before God one day and give an account of your life. God is going to meet each and every one of us personally on that day and say, why should I let you into my kingdom? He's going to look at your heart. He's going to look at who you are. And having made the way possible through one means, through that one act of generosity that will either make you a dragon to be vanquished or spike to be saved, recognize we are falling. We just have to be willing to receive that net that's going to be caught for us. We just have to be willing to receive salvation when we know we need saving. Because we are fallen. We have done wrong. We aren't worthy to enter God's kingdom. But the only one who is made it possible by offering you himself, even at the loss of everything else, even at the loss of his birthday present. Literally, his birthday was a loss in of itself because he had to leave heaven and exchange it for a, <laughs> for a manger, for an animal trough? Exchanging God's throne in an eternal reality to literally being naked and screaming, wrapped in some sweat rag for a donkey? But he did that all for you. Recognize that. When God says he loves you, he's not saying it because he wrote it. He said, he's saying it because he proved it. Thank you for your time and listening to this study. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer them. If you want to see this channel grow and be an encouragement to me and those who are taking part in this ministry, please subscribe and leave a like. It's more an encouragement that you would know. But more than anything else, and the most important thing that could ever come out of this ministry, if you want to see the gospel, go out to our, our unique fan base. Please share this video with those that you feel would be blessed by it. Thank you for your time, and God bless you.